Popular speaker and online personality Douglas Kruger has recently released a new book that details some of the leading characteristics one must possess to become wealthy. Titled How to Grow Rich, 50 Ways to Debunk Money Myths and Master Wealth, this book is described as a tool that aims to represent hope and, well, to the people at a time when hope is much needed. Douglas Kruger joins us now via Zoom to tell us more about what this offering entails. Douglas, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Great pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. Speak to us, Douglas, about what this book is all about and what propelled you to put it all together. Yes, well, there are two schools of thought uh, competing for people's minds at the moment in terms of how wealth is grown. And uh, one I describe uh, lo in a logically correct but maybe grammatically incorrect way as wrong, wronger, wrongest. And the other one leads to broad scale prosperity. And the first half of the book is really about debunking the sort of money myths that tend to hold people in these generational cycles of poverty. And that's the thing that we're, that we're after. We're going for the jugular on that one. And after clearing away some of the thoughts that tend to get in the way, the question for the latter half of the book becomes, how do you proactively build wealth? And that, in a very broad nutshell, is what we're looking at here. So rather than something that might be described as the sort of uh, classical get-rich-quick scheme, this is really how to view the entire landscape to perceive what goes wrong and to make sure that you get yourself and your family onto the right track. Surely everybody wants to get wealthy there, Douglas. Uh, like everybody, well, most people have got ideas of, of getting wealthy, but they don't have the means, they don't have the resources, they don't have the necessary yeah. access to the capital, you know, to build yes, their absolutely. wealth. And and in fact, one of the more interesting questions is what else is competing against you? Um, and there's a, there's a fabulous book that forms part of the research on this one called The Tyranny of Experts by uh, a gentleman named William Easterly. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what he basically does is he tracks the, the history of emerging nations over the past half century to, to a full century and comes to the conclusion that one of the most devastating um, players or, or, or agencies against personal wealth in developing nations is governments that they are they represent mm -hmm. one of the worst things in terms of lifting people out of poverty now we have this knee-jerk reaction that simply says government must and we don't question that and a couple of things go wrong when we when we fail to question that idea that government must mm -hmm. the first thing is that if government must government will and they will in every instance and of course what you end up there uh, with there is that you relinquish control and you have this sort of all-powerful state that takes control because you want it to but secondly and from a from a well perspective, it turns out that it's one of the worst things that you can do. The idea that a state should step in and solve things economically is actually antithetical to wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and just for example, as we as we started coming out of the, uh, the lockdowns, we heard our leadership and we heard our president say that government will lead the way in terms of trying to revive the economy and get things going again. And I, I was busy writing the book at the same time that I was hearing that narrative and thinking, according to the research, that's the worst thing that we could possibly do. But yes, to your question, there are very limited resources for a great many people. What I do in the book is I try to ask the question, where are you now and what do you have to work with? Yeah. And I try to be yeah. as practical about that as I possibly can. And what's the definition of wealth and how much money does one have to have and, you know, to, to be regarded to be worthy? Well, here's a very simple answer to that question. Wealth equals a little excess, a little left over. Um, and um, on, on this sort of the, the uh, Marxist side of, of economics, Karl Marx uh, they really attacked this idea of excess of uh, profits left over um, and vilified that as one of the worst things about humanity. Turns out that if you don't have a little left over as a family, as an entrepreneur, as a business person, there is no option for innovation. There is no option for growth. You effectively cryogenically freeze a society right where it is. So the very simple answer to what is wealth is a little left over. And then the, the question becomes, what do you do with that? Do you simply consume it? Do you invest it in something else? Do you use it to grow the next thing? Mm. And you also make mention of what sort of person one needs to be and strive to become, yeah. uh, you know, to, to become wealthy. Speak to us more about that. Yeah, this is a very interesting one, and I try to be as frank here as I possibly can. Um, this is a, a combination of, of research from groups like Forbes and Inc. and so forth, and also my observations in working with entrepreneurs. And uh, there are several qualities that are um, representative of the type of person who, who tends to become a self-made millionaire or billionaire. And at the heart and soul of all of them is the simple word push. 
Now, for if you are perhaps an, an artistic person or an introverted person, the idea of being a pushy person is probably quite repellent to you. But I make the point that push doesn't necessarily mean becoming a hardcore salesperson. If you look at someone like, say, Ed Sheeran, the artist, uh, here's a person who has the, the kind of personal wealth by which he could buy a small island. Mm -hmm. And we don't think of him as a pushy or obnoxious personality. But if you go back into his history, you will see video footage of him at the age of 13 and 14 out in the streets in London, busking, playing his guitar, singing, performing. And it's this push, push, push. So even for the sort of the artistic temperament or the person who wants to do something charming as, as a business, it's that drive that keeps you going. That, that is really at the, at the foremost. Um, another interesting one is that wealthy people tend not to be particularly concerned with the opinions of others, uh, which is not to say that they are uh, immune to feedback. You have to be aware of your landscape but they tend not to be neurotic about the approval of others. And I think most of us actually struggle with that one. We tend to be exceedingly hung up on the approval of others. And you say that this book is not a glib, get-rich-quick uh, scam or get-rich-hit mm. job. What do you mean by this? All right. Well, for starters, the first half of the book is titled Two, two Ways, Two Worlds, Two Wars for Your Mind. And what I do is I, I weigh against one another two different economists with completely different worldviews. Now, we're starting to see some really alarming research coming out of different nations all around the world, um, including just, for example, out of the United States. Some 75% of the youth believe in Marxist socialism. And that is a an astonishingly sure way to decimate wealth for the next generation. I mean, this is a system that's uh, responsible for the death by a starvation or government genocide of over 100 million people. I weigh up Thomas Piketty, on the one hand, who believes in confiscation of wealth, versus Thomas Sowell, on the other, who believes in free trade, enterprise, um, and the ways that, uh, that people actually genu genuinely build up wealth. So it is a bit of a philosophical book starting out. After that, we get incredibly practical about what you can do in your scenario. All right, Douglas, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, well, that was our guest author this morning, Douglas Kruger, and we've been speaking to him uh, about his latest book titled How to Grow Rich, 50 Ways to Debunk Money Myths and Master Wealth.